here at the McMaster University event with Team 2200 BCR Blackout, and we're going to check out some of, some new sub systems of their robots. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you, and also in partnership with the following. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Okay, can you explain a little bit about your end effector then? Sure, so here we have our funnel intake um, that slopes it down into the bottom and then down there we have two beam brake sensors. Once the beam brake sensors are triggered, the arm will go down, I can't move it because it's enabled, and it will come into the end effector using these real wheels here. Once it comes in, there's another beam brake sensor right here. Once it breaks that sensor, then it will start moving forward like that. And then when it starts moving forward, the wheels spin a little. I'll show you in a little bit. And it comes past this sensor. When it comes back to this sensor, we pull it back in. And so we have it at the perfect distance out of the way of our elevator to move up and ready to score. I can show you right here. So it goes in, breaks the beam brake sensor, breaks this beam brake sensor, pulls it back in with this, and we tightly grab it like this. I can also show you how we do our algae if you'd like. Do you want to spit? So just sticking on the coral for a second, yeah, I noticed nobody was touching the control. So that's yeah. a fully autonomous Fully process. autonomous intake. The beam brake sensors do it all themselves due to our programming at the bottom. The beam brake sensor triggers this to go down. Once it breaks the first beam brake sensor, we come back through. Other beam brake sensor kind of positions the coral how we want it, and then we can score. So all done autonomously. Co-driver, driver, don't have to do anything. Awesome. Cool. And do you want to show the algae then? Of course. Do you want to spit first? Perfect. And so we'll pass into the algae. Perfect. So how we intake algae is using the same end effector. As you can see, it probably wouldn't be able to pinch the algae normally. So we added these springs and a movable front here. I'll show you in a second. It opens up to pinch the algae to get a better grip on it. Like that. So the, the whole intake opens up this way using the springs to be able to grab the algae and pinch it harder. And then we can just release it. And then we come like this to be safe so that when we're driving around, nobody can knock the algae. And that's not an autonomous process? That is not an autonomous. Uh, the comeback is an autonomous process, um, but the picking it up is using the co-driver's buttons and the driver's alignment. Cool, but coming you. back after we pick up this fully autonomous. Cool, thank you very much. Okay, can you explain how your elevator works? Yeah, so we have a three-stage elevator. Uh, I can show L1. Uh, so it comes down and then it'll shoot it up. And then L2. It'll, L2 will come up just a little bit not bring all the stages up with our constant four springs. And then L3, it'll bring these two stages up. And then L4, it'll bring everything up and it'll shoot down onto the L4. And then in, in our pulleys, we have two pulleys down here. Uh, one of them goes, lines up, one of them lines down. Cool. That's pretty much our elevator. Thank you very much. Okay, Declan, can you explain the software that your robot runs on? Yeah, so we have a uh, PID loop with the limelight. So we have two limelights on both sides so that we can see it, see the reef tag no matter where we are. Um, and with the driver presses like left bumper, it'll start aligning to the, to the left uh, side and basically turn signal to signal that it's going that way. And once it's lined up, it'll shine green. So we know that we're in, in the place where we need to be to score. Um, that also only kicks in once we notice that we're 1.5 meters away from the reef. So the driver can just drive full speed into it while holding this button and it'll immediately go. And it works for left, right, both for algae, uh, whatever we need. Uh, and that's, it's just calculating a vector of where it needs to go and using a PID loop to get to where it needs to go. Um, other things software wise, uh, we are very careful with the arm because obviously if the elevator goes up right now, the claw gets crushed in it. So we're very careful that we have to get past this certain level with the shoulder movement before we can start going up. Um, as well as it's able to make clear um, transitions between different states. So if we're in level two, it can go directly to level four rather than waiting in back in a stow position and going up. Or even if we're changing as we're going, it'll find out where it needs to go. Um, as well as we're careful um, in terms of the reef. 
where if we're scoring, it goes up and then out. So we're never getting hooked on the reef. Uh, in all of our playoff matches so far, we haven't gotten hooked. Um, and I think the element of folding outwards, um, though dangerous, it makes it a lot more consistent when we're scoring. We haven't missed uh, any autos at this event so far, which is pretty great. That's awesome. And how many pieces do you score in auto? In auto, we score uh, three pieces on level four and then go back to the feeder station for another. Cool. Thank you very much. Okay, so you guys have a shallow climb. Do you want to explain that mechanism for me? Yeah, so our shallow climb is this mechanism here. So we've kind of got a falcon looking thing and then we've got our ropes that come down. So as well as this, it's kind of like a manta. So what we do, uh, end game hits and we drive straight into the cage and this would pull down which will it go so we go into climb mode and our arm automatically moves back so it doesn't interfere when it moves down um, our cage slides in here and it locks like this so this holds onto the bars and our climber here it moves down so that way uh, it'll pull our robot up off the ground and i believe that's our climb Cool, and do you guys just like drive into it or do you have any sort of alignment? Um, we have a snap button. Okay, so we do have a snap button that goes straight to rotation that we need. And then basically we drive straight into it. So in hopes that the hook right here will go right into the circle that's in the middle of the cage. And about how long do you, does that take, do you know? Six seconds, wow. that's how far we pushed it. It's pretty speedy. Yeah. Awesome, cool. Uh, now, I know last year you guys were not BCR Blackout. I know. So just for everybody wondering, 2200, we heard that number before. That was MM Rambotics. You want to explain a little bit about that? So we had a school team uh, that was MM Rambotics. So we were lucky to keep our team number. Um, our mentor that was running it and that had access to the school, he could no longer keep doing it. So what happened is a group of our mentors came together and decided that we weren't done with the team and we wanted to keep going. So we came together and we found a building and we did some funding and it took a lot of time and money and outreach, a lot of sponsors, um, but we managed to get a facility, find machines. Um, luckily, a lot of the students that were already on the team came back. Um, our goal for next year is to do more so more of a community outreach to hopefully get some more people who are interested in joining that don't have access to the team. Um, but it's been pretty fun. I mean, our quality is the same. You know, we still have just as much fun. And I mean, we keep our reputation, so it's been pretty fun. Yeah, it's, it's great to still see you guys here. Thank you. Okay, this has been 2200 and Black Manta. Good luck at the rest of the competition, guys. Can't wait to see what you guys do. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.